licensed clinical social worker and emotional wellness coach. And today we're going to be talking about a program, a subconscious program that um, I'm going to show you how to stop. Um, I help people do the brain work for resolving symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. So that's really the perspective I'm going to talk about with this, um, which is fun for me. What I'm going to talk about are dynamics um, as well, but it, those dynamics are very deep and there's a lot of different professionals that go very deep into that. Um, my specialty is helping people stop this stuff and so and breaking free from this because it's very, very important to mental health, um, one's own mental health, because we will internalize this program and treat ourselves the exact same way and this is not healthy. And this is part of how I help people resolve symptoms, resolve disorders, because these internal programs have to be resolved because we can't treat ourselves like this and be well. So, um, so here we go. The title of this is going to be how to stop following the protect the abuser program. Okay. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. This program is very primal. Um, primates are doing this around the world. The monkeys are doing this. Um, the humans are doing this. And um, it's very primal. It has to do with dynamics of power and control. It has to do with being tribal. It has to be, it has to do with how things have been organized since caveman days. Um, the ones with the power, you do what they say, or you could get kicked out. You could be killed you could um, have all sorts of bad things happen to you if you do not um, obey and follow along and protect the one with the power. And so obviously today we've evolved quite a bit. Um, power, we want to be sharing power. We found that sharing power and shared power is really awesome because now we've got synergy, we've got collaboration, we've got um, cooperation. There's so many things that we're finding have their own power and they're like totally way different ways of doing things. And, um, but it's very hard to leave these old programs that we are um, primarily uh, conditioned to and that come with our instincts and such. So, but we can resolve these and we can upgrade these, upgrade these as well. And it doesn't have to be accidental. We can actually do the work ourselves and heal and grow and evolve and really shift from um, the dynamic of power and control and shift over to shared powered, share power, shared power <laughs> dynamics and constructs and interaction, which are huge. And so we're already making lots of progress to that. Um, and it, it's so important to do this work because like I said, this is, we can really have this sort of construct with ourself and really um, protect our own inner abuser and support that part and let that part run amok and go undeveloped and not go through a, a healing and growing process um, so that it really starts learning how to share power, become inner wisdom and not inner abuser. Um, and so this is, this is really important and this is part of being healthy and well and your system is very prepared to do this work. So, um, so I, I, so because we are talking about something primal and instinctual, we're, we're not really talking about our thinking center. Our thinking center is like, let's, let's share power. Let's cooperate. Let's collaborate. Um, our thinking center already gets this. This is not where this problem lies. Um, this problem lies in the fact that all of this is very deeply subconscious and to the depths of the subconscious. I don't even know because I'm like, I think this could be in our genetics. This could be in our gene expression. This could, right? I mean, this is this is why there are great minds working on this. And my dog problem has, has returned, except for they are fine now. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave them over there. Um, so, um, but regardless, um, and maybe it is our ancestral experiences moving through. Maybe there's old energy in this. This is deeply subconscious. So, <laughs> my little visitor, I think, hmm, I don't have a strategy for this yet. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with the dog situation. <laughs> he has found me and he is very insistent. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I thought I had an idea. 
I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to see if I can concentrate and if you all can concentrate. But okay, so um, it, so it's it, this is deeply subconscious. This whole program. This is this means that it it is it's going to that program is going to run automatically and it's going to run outside of our our consciousness our conscious awareness. And so that means it's deeply powerful because you're not going to see it happen. You're not going to know when it's going to happen. It's going to feel right. And it's going to just come through you, which is what subconscious programs do. Um, the other piece of this is that it's, it's, it's powerfully somatic. Um, it is, which means that it, it's, it's in the body. There will be somatic distress associated with this. And we're looking for this. These are the pieces we want to resolve and get resolved so that your brain can create a new way of being with, this, the, with abusers. That's what we're really programming, reprogramming here. And that's what's so powerful. If you can create in your subconscious world a new way of being with abusers, you are winning. <laughs> you are winning because you will have a new and more effective way of dealing with your inner abusers and the outer abusers. And that is very, very liberating. And this is the program you pass on to your children. And so this one is vitally important if you have children because you don't want them learning how to uh, protect the inner abusers or to protect outer abusers. You want them to know how to work with them effectively and powerfully. And if you get this, if you're a parent, it comes out in your world and you will start seeing massive changes and, um, and just d these, these healthy power dynamics um, shifting, integrating, okay? Um, and um, so, but we are not looking for, for our, we're not looking for what we know, what we understand about this. We are going into deep places here in this work. Um, and we're going into the subconscious mind and the, and the, the, the body. And so what happens is we are going to be working on processing them. Okay. And what you're going to notice, there's some clues in your everyday world that are going to show up and you're, that's where this program is expressing itself. Right. So I can, I have people do this in several different ways. One, I just want to know everything they know about this issue. Um, and then we can help the brain process that. That doesn't seem to be the deepest way to do this. So I, I do that so we can get a frame of where are we going deep here? Um, really what I want to look at is where the program runs out in the external world. So you might notice these different behaviors and then you could say, aha, I have something that I can what I can guide my brain to go back there and re do some reprogramming work that will create change for all layers of you in the future. So the next time that same situation happens, your brain will run a different program and more evolved and more mature, more integrated and healthy program. And you will notice a difference between then pre-processing and after. Um, and that's, that's what you would expect if you are getting this work right. Um, so some behaviors you may notice, and these are going to be unconscious, so you're going to have to watch them and look for them, is you might notice victim blaming. Okay, something else I want to say about this is that sometimes it's easier to catch these things outside of you. Um, it, it just it kind of depends on how your inner world is set up, but uh, sometimes you can only catch them outside of yourself. You can see the external issue right and that's a great place to start because what we are doing on the outside it's also we're doing something in the inside as well um, other times you'll be able to see yourself the um, the victim blaming internally right and that's where you want to catch it you're like I got it I got the program um, and so what happens is that um, you will start hearing that inner negative criticism right and a lot of times people go with it right they're like oh yeah I know I feel so bad I feel so awful but hey hold up Who's saying that to you in there, right? We're looking for that piece. That's the piece we want. To, we want to find the abuser in there. Um, but those are types of clues that, hey, we've, we've, we've got a hit. We've got, a, we're, we've got a, the abuser in our sight. Um, and if you can find the victim, you can find the, the abuser, right? So, um, so victim blaming can be a great spot for doing this work. Um, uh, you can see, um, strategies for siding with the abusers. Um, a lot of the, the conversations around the abuser will dim out and a lot of the conversation around the abuser picks up, right? The focus has shifted and that's really what we're looking for. And we, you'll notice, Hey, what, what about the, what about the abuser? 
you know? Um, and, and in our inner world, we'll see the same thing. We hear all the chatter and we think, oh my gosh, I'm so terrible. I'm so bad. But hey, hold up. What about the part of us that's doing that? And they often get off the hook. And that's part of keep protecting the abuser to keep the system of power and control in place. Um, uh, we start expecting less from the abuser, right? So these are the standards, but, you know, they're not held to them, right? It, people need to talk nicely to each other, but not the abuser, right? Um, things like that. We are also um, noticing displaced aggression. This is great. Primates love this. Um, if you, which it, displaced aggression means that if you, somebody um, conks you on the head, because um, this, I mean, think primates here, animals and, you know, all of them. Um, if somebody conks you on the head and they have more power than you, it's not safe to conk them back. But that's actually where the conking back should go, right? You, <laughs> that's where. But it's it's. But the, because this is known, the 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 one with more power, the stronger primate, um, does the conking, and then this one, even if it thinks mm, I'm gonna conk you back, wait, no, you could tear my limbs off. Uh, so, but I still have all this aggression now because you hit me, and now I gotta, and now I'm gonna go hit the person. I'm gonna conk them on the head, the weaker than me, where it's safe to do put to put this aggression this is displaced aggression instead of going where we should be going with the aggression we're we're displacing it on something else this um and so if you catch yourself in these behaviors this is a wonderful place to find this stuff okay if you're finding that you're you're mad at your partner but you're abusing yourself maybe with food or with exercise or with something um you're displus you're displacing that aggression right and so we want to like well hey what's up with that why can't you just go confront them and your brain will tell you oh because of this 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 and this and this great that's the stuff we want to get your brain to work on and i'll talk about that in a second um we also will find scapegoating in these um these protect the abuser programs so if we are if we if we're in a group and there's one part that is one person that um is we can we'll make them responsible for all the wrong that's happening right if you're your family scapegoat you know this is a very powerfully awful painful painful place and um but it serves well to protect the abuser because it takes the focus and attention off the abuser if you understand the power of the human mind, whatever we give attention to, that's where change will happen. And so the, 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 to keep the, the change off of the abuser, we need to keep the focus off of the abuser. And so that's why a lot of people with this program will also have ways of finding their own faults because when they're interacting with abusers, the abusers will say something, well, what about you? And then they're like, oh my gosh, yes, you're right. I didn't say that, right? right? But that was, there was a detention and focus switch that just occurred and now the attention the powerful work will be going on in your own inner world which is not accurate for this situation because the problem was actually with the abuser and so a lot of times um, victims or people running this program will make so many shifts so many changes but it's not the right one because it, they can't actually put their focus and attention where it actually should be for long enough to create change right and so um so this is really, really powerful. Who can control the attention is really powerful. And in the inner world, you're going to find the same thing happening on the inner world as you find it on the outside world. And so, um, but these are signs that this is, this is what the deal is. This is, this is right where a hotbed of, we can, we can really transform these primal, um, instinctual patterns. And so these are, these are what I would call access points. These are point, points along your, your everyday life where we could access the primal program. We could access the instinctual program and we can create change right in there. And so we're looking for them. Okay. Um, so, um, so be, and then because let me see, there's, um, some other things you might notice is not believing the victim, um, doubting the victim, um, scrutinizing the victim's story. Um, uh, you might also notice making jokes and trying to humiliate and undermine the sanity of the victim. All of those things are part of protecting the abuser. 
and you might notice this going on. Oh gosh, you're so dumb. Oh, good this, you're so this. This is like, that it undermines your authority to stand up and actually focus on the abuser internally. And, um, and I don't think this is good for the abusers because they get to run around a whole lifetime being ill, being wrong, and not being able to develop and living in a bubble of fear, right? And so the, the sooner we take this down, I think it's such a big act of kindness. I, this is what I see happening in the inner world. A lot of the inner abusers are wounded parts of us. And so um, when that part starts to get the attention they need and the healing they need, they quickly shift and they quickly go into their evolved state which the inner critic is, is supposed to be the inner wisdom the inner guidance and that's really what the shift that we would expect and we want to create and so a lot of these these um, things externally as well like uh, you know when we're helping our children with fights and we're one of our kids is the abuser and one of them's the victim right we have an opportunity to really help that child evolve out of that state and really learn how to share power this is these are huge lessons and the sooner we can get ourselves out of this the sooner we will not make mistakes outside of ourselves and go blame the victim right we want to we want to come into this thing wise and give everyone the support that they need right and victims and abuser need a little bit different support and so we want to be accurate with that not just be running the old programs so um, but what we find is why why we protect the abuser is because it is scary not to do so. Um, we are under threat of being killed. Our nervous system thinks this, right? Logically may not be the truth. It could be the truth. I don't know your situation. Um, and, um, and all of these things are the spectrum of this stuff is very real. Um, but we're, we're afraid, we're afraid for somebody else. Maybe there's, um, you know, if this happens, this other person will be affected. Maybe there's some threats there. Um, we're noticing that we could get kicked out of our home, right? Or if we're the scapegoat and we decide that we're going to pay more attention to the abuser and the entire system said, no, you're not, um, there's going to be a stark difference, right? And so you really, you're risking no longer belonging to the group. Um, by not my, not owning this program. And so there is a lot at stake. And what we have here is survival level distress. And because there's survival level distress, that means your survival system is very attentive to what's going on. And you're going to find yourself often, um, this is pre-processing this, so you're going to find yourself um, in fight, flight, freeze, faint, or fawn. So your system's gonna say, don't do it. It is, it is gonna be going the opposite direction. So it's gonna be like, you play this game. You protect the abuser just like everybody else. You better. Oh, you're gonna not? Hmm, I'm, I'm turning off your mouth. You're not gonna be able to talk. Or, huh, I'm gonna make sure that you're about to have that conversation, but your bowels are now loose and you better get to that bathroom. And so your body is working to keep you safe and you might have all these great ideas in your head, but mm -mm, you're not doing it. And so in your survival system is not a logical or reasoning center. It just is listening to the body and the body thinks you're not going to make it. And so it's starting to work against you doing any of these ideas you have in your head. And so, and if you do go forward, you will be going against your body and you will have your own internal challenges as a result of that. Whether the next time your survival system says we need to make a better program so she can't get through us next time. Next time we're going to go, we're going to make her go to the bathroom. We're going to make, give her the runs and we're going to make a panic attack and we're going to make sure she is, it, we're going to freeze. So before it was only doing one, but you got past it. So now it's applying three different ones. And if you get past that, this stuff, you know, it's adding layers on this. Like we will keep her safe. Whatever this crazy idea she has on her head, in her head, we're going to, we're going to go against that. And so, um, that is a really hard, awful way to do this work. And there's a, there's a much easier way. And so we really want to bring your body and your mind and your subconscious mind together with this, um, so that they agree that it's safe to take the steps that you want to take. Um, and so. What we know is that if the survival system is firing off in states of fight, flight, freeze, faint, or fawn, then, um, then your, your body is sending messages of distress. And so is your subconscious mind. There's, there's like your subconscious mind's like, I can't, I can't, 
I have no, I, I can't do this. So what, what, when we're doing this work, what we want to do is we want to actually let your body send this distress and get it through your brain's healing process so that the information from the body gets where it's destined to go, which is to the front of the brain. And when the front of the brain hears the information from the body, all of a sudden it's like, oh, really? Oh, okay, I get it. This is a new piece of information. This is great. And then that one can create a new program, new way of being with, with that information and really send the program back down. And then the body says, mm, well, actually, I think I could do that. And that makes sense. And your subconscious mind is like, oh, yes, let's rearrange this. Okay, I think I can make a program with that. And the next thing you know, everybody's in line to go forward here. Now, this is a very simplified process. And, but it is the simple process. It can happen very quickly. Um, that can happen within two minutes to 40 minutes in time. And because your body is naturally going to be doing what it needs to do to heal. And it has its own process for this. But the thing is, is that with this information that's coming from the body will register in the brain as pain. And the pain neurons are what the survival system is listening to. And so it wants to close that process down. And so all of a sudden the body is sending all this information, like, and, and the body doesn't use words, it uses sensations. So you might notice the quivering in your stomach, um, the pressure in your chest. You might notice the, that's your body doing its job of sending the information up. It's like, I'm going to shake on these Morse code on these nerves and make sure the right message gets to the front of the brain. But the survival system's interrupting and blocking that. And so it's not completing. And so there's all this information that these two could be getting together and creating and, and a wonderful new process that's not. And so what we do in this is that we just, we keep using interventions and we allow, we, when the body is doing its communicating, we're going to also keep the survival system out of the way. We're like, I know this registers as pain, but can you just leave it open? Can you just not block this process, please? And so, and because we are using interventions that are mind-body interventions, we are speaking the native language of the survival system, which is the body. So while the body is having this conversation, we're also using maybe emotional freedom techniques. I teach quite a few interventions, but emotional freedom techniques, you're tapping on the different points. And so while your body is sending all this information to the front of the brain, which might feel like freak out, like your body's freaking out, you're also sending messages of we're safe, we can heal. Right? Or maybe you're doing an eye movement thing or there, we need to use the body to send these messages so that the, the survival system can pick up. There's, there's, there's some painful material moving through, but we're safe. It needs to hear that we're safe comment in its own native language, which is the body. And so all of a sudden, once your brain, your survival system is getting that, that message and it's responding right away, it's electrical. And so as long as you're, you're tapping here, you're, it's, you're, it's receiving that message of we're safe. And so, um, all of a sudden this process opens up and all this beautiful communication, which is very painful to humans, um, is moving to the front of the brain. And what's going to happen here is that you're going to notice epiphanies. You're going to notice that sensation, those sensations in your body lessening. You're going to notice epiphanies, insights, um, aha moments. You're going to notice all of that stuff happening. And then you're also going to notice, um, the process of problem solving and, in the beginning, the problem solving is not gonna be super fantastic because we need to get all the information through about this, right? And so we, we might use some tricks to bring up that, uh, what, is there more distress in there? Is there more that hasn't been processed? Let's focus over to, on it this way or this way or this way. And if we can find a spot where the survival system, the body freaks out again, great, let's get that stuff. Tell it, tell it to the front, <laughs> tell it to the front of the brain. Um, and we're helping with that conversation. We're facilitating the conversation by opening the survival system with the interventions. And we're also helping the body desensitize the pain in there. And then it's like that pain is like a big force field. And once that pain gets, gets, um, resolved, which brains do this emotional and somatic pain, get, get processed and resolved. It's not supposed to just stay there forever. That's not what it's supposed to be doing. And so when we help the brain with that and resolve that stuff, all of a sudden, all this rich information and data becomes available. And that's the stuff your prefrontal cortex loves and makes insights and makes new programs with and gains understanding. And then also gives you words for your experience, for your thoughts, your knowledge, because all of that's pr the front brain activity. That's what it does. It, it's what puts your thoughts and feelings into words. It's, it's what translates this, this stomach pain into actual meaning. Or that was, that was this, that was a memory. That was this, that was this feeling, or that was this statement. This is a belief I held. All of that stuff in the body is, are those things. 
it's just our body's experience of them. Um, so this is really powerful to be able to unite the, the mind and the body together into something that is aligned for stopping the program, evolving the program of protect the abuser. And that, and, and I, oh, I'm hoping that I'm sharing that with you in a way that you can really grasp and understand. Um, and I just want to say it is a very simple process and it's much easier than people realize or know it's just about doing the work. Um, I, I had a client today that um, they are doing something like this and we just, I gave her, we talked about how we would organize this. She's got great skills at this point. I said, this, let's organize it like this. You're going to do this work. Then we'll come back and we'll see where you're at. Um, I fully <laughs> expect her to resolve this herself because it is so simple. Um, it's just about knowing the strategies for it and then implementing the strategies and knowing how to troubleshoot anything you run into. And there are strategies for troubleshooting right? All this stuff is very, very, um, simple, maybe not that easy all the time, but we can resolve this. And what happens when you come in and you do this inner work, all of a sudden, when you go back out, you're just doing things differently because you're running new programs. Sometimes you'll be more conscious of them. You'll say, well, I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to practice it like this. Or sometimes I'll have clients say, I was in this situation. I just said this new thing. And I was like, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Did I just say that? I said that. And then the whole situation runs better. And it wasn't even a thought to them because they had their subconscious mind was able to organize that and create a response and run it seamlessly. That's really what we're looking for. And we want the sub your subconscious programming the for relationships, for interactions to be healthy and automatic. They're already automatic. That's why they're, you know, they're subconscious programs. It's part of the autopilot automatic stuff, but we want them to be healthy because you're going to run them, right? So we want to pull up these programs and we want to clean them out. We want to take the trauma out, take the stuck emotion. We, this is me scrubbing them on one of those old fashioned scrubbers, like the laundry things. <laughs> you take, you get your subconscious program out and you scrub it up and all that trauma and um, generational stuff, ancestral business and all the stuck emotions and the program stuff that no longer fits you, that stuff, your brain's job is to go through that and clean it and resolve it. Kind of like those little shrimp. That's what I think of those little, I think I've seen those little cleaner shrimp. I'm sure they're in your brain somewhere and positive and they get to work on these programs when they can get them, get the access to them. And that's why we're doing the interventions to really open up your nervous system, the, the nervous, the nervous system highways of communication so that all this stuff can come through when it doesn't come through that stuff still surfaces, but it starts building and it's stuck. It's like a congested area of traffic. And this is where everybody gets angry and there's explosions of panic and all this stuff we don't need. And so we really want this open because once that stuff's complete, it resolves, it's finished. And so, and then you get to see the outcome of your work and we always get to see the outcome of our work, but sometimes we're not trained to see what the outcome is. And then we really want to then take that outcome. If we don't like the outcome, take it through the process again, scrub it up a little bit more and go. So it's, it's very much a, a feedback, um, observation strategy, but, um, but it really helps to, to get the body the body's wisdom in line with the brain's wisdom and vice versa. The brain's wisdom needs to get in alignment with the body's wisdom and the subconscious mind the same. And we want that nice integrated teamwork. We want your team working together. And so we don't want your body afraid of what your head wants to do. And that's, that's not a place that's not, that's not a place of winning. Um, it can be a place of surviving, but we want you really thriving and winning in these interactions. So, um, so these are, these are the steps I would suggest. And I, there's a, there's, um, I'm talking about an overall process. Um, but there's, there are really layers to this. There are really steps in this that get deeper, but that's, that's really it. Just getting your brain to process. This is the transformation. This is how it happens. 
and it's really really phenomenal so if this is something that you want to learn more about or you really just want to do the work because that's really what I'm about I don't I'm not fabulous at learning about all this stuff and I think there are lots of better people out there but um, at learning about these dynamics with the stopping the, the with the the protecting the abuser there's so many great thoughts um, and books about that I that's not that's not what I do so but if you're at a point where you want to just make it stop where you want to stop the inner abuse that's happening you want to stop the external abuse that happens this is exactly what I help people do and how and I have a process a systematic process for doing that and helping people overcome this issue in two to six months so instead of that two to six years and so if that's something you're interested in I encourage you to look at my website send me a DM tell me you're interested um, tell me tell me you're interested and um, yeah, and we'll talk about how to work together. That's all available on my on my website. Uh, there are workshops. There's an online course where I give you the exact curriculum I develop and I use even today with my clients and um, what's involved in my intensive coaching program, which that's available too. I will walk you through step by step of this process. And so those, but find out about that. Send me a message. Let's do this. And um, I will talk with you soon. Take care. Bye.